okay resolution of forces eh? all right uh, 1.2 resolution of forces okay so uh, this resolution of forces is a bit like the opposite of finding resultant force finding resultant force is we want to find the result of two force combined together right now okay when we want to find resultant force we find the result of two forces combined together but for resolution of forces is the opposite that means you have one force and you want to split you want to resolve the forces uh, you want to resolve the force into two components okay resultant force uh, uh, resolution of forces is the process of resolving a force into two components okay so let's look at this example eh? okay we have a force f acting on an object at angle theta above the horizontal that means uh, the angle is measured from horizontal okay so at this angle similar with concept of parallelogram method draw a rectangle to represent the horizontal component and vertical component fy identify a right angle triangle and the component forces can be calculated using trigonometry okay so you see basically what we are doing here is we pretend that this f this force eh? we pretend that this force is resultant force we pretend that this force is resultant force Oops. okay we pretend that this force is resultant force and uh, in the previous topic, we learned that uh, how do we find resultant force if you have two forces acting perpendicularly with each other. That means you have two forces. Let's say you have force Fy and force Fx acting in 90 degrees to each other on an object. So if two force pull on this object that means the resultant force will be in this direction right now okay this is a direction uh, this is a uh, direction of the resultant force right so uh, in previous topic we learned that if we have these two force we can use uh, Pythagoras theorem or we can use trigonometry to calculate the uh, the resultant force we can calculate the angle okay using Pythagoras theorem and also trigonometry so the same thing apply here also this one is just the opposite we pretend that this force f uh, is resultant force so we want to go backward we want to find the force that is uh, we want to find the two forces that are acting perpendicularly to each other okay so same concept if we have parallelogram then that means the length of this fx and the length of this fy can represent the magnitude of the force so we can so from this parallelogram we can get triangle okay we can get right angle triangle So let's say this is the right angle triangle. Lah. Okay, we can get right angle triangle. Okay, so from this right angle triangle, we can calculate the 
fx and fy is how much? Okay, using trigonometry. Okay, using trigonometry. Eh? Okay, so um, if we if I want to find this fx, uh, this is if we assume that we know the this force and we know the angle. Eh? We want to find these two components. We want to find these two force. Okay. So let's say I want to find fx first. So this fx is um, adjacent to the angle. So we can use um, uh, cos. Okay, we can use cos. So cos theta equal to fx. Okay, adjacent over hypotenuse f. Uh, F lah, okay. This is this force is F, lah. so I can find this F X if I take the force times the cos theta. Okay, uh, this is not actually resultant force, lah, okay. Uh, this is F, lah, not actually resultant force. Okay, so F X equal F cos theta. That means you take this F. Multiply with cos theta, you can get this component fx is how much? See or not? And then next, we can also find this fy. This fy is opposite. Opposite, so we can use sine. Sine theta equals to fy over f. So fy will be f sine theta. Okay, so now you see that these two forces they are perpendicular to each other. We can find by using trigonometry. Okay, eh? so basically, uh, what happened here is we pretend that there is two forces. Ah. So these two forces that is perpendicular to each other, we call it component forces. Okay. We call it component forces. So this Fx is the X component. Okay, this Y is Y component. Okay. Alright. Okay, so Finding the X component and Y component is where we successful in uh, re resolving the force F. Okay, this is resolution of forces. Basically, it means that we take the force F and we split the force f into fx and fy the x component and the y component forces okay so this is what we call resolution of force okay let's look at example eh? okay calculate the component forces of the 100 newton force Okay, that means we want to find the x component and the y component. Ah. Okay, so we pretend that there is parallelogram. Ah. Okay, uh, so this is the x component, this is the y component. So this one is also the Y component, eh? so we can get the ninety, uh, the triangle, right angle triangle here. So to find the uh, X component, we can use cos. Okay, cos uh, theta equals to F X over F. Okay, so fx uh, just straight away substitute inside lah. 
So cos 35 degree equals to fx over f is 100 newton. So fx will be equal to 81.9 newton. Okay, 81.9. 81.9 Newton Okay, so we successful in finding the X component Okay, this is the X component So now we want to find the Y component So Y component, this is opposite So we can use sine Sine theta equals to Fy over F Okay, so sine 35 degree equals to Fy over F. So F is 100 Newton. Eh? So Fy equals to okay, 57.36 okay, Newton. Alright. So uh, we have successful in finding the Two component forces, the fx and our com x component and the y component. So basically, this means that this 100 newton can represent the x and y component. The x and y component can represent the 100 newton. Okay, so they are the same as each other lah. That means the effect of the x and y component together. And the effect of 100 Newton alone is the same. Okay. Eh? Alright. Okay, let's look at the number 2. Eh? Okay, determine the magnitude of the component forces of pushing force. Okay, this one you see, push down to uh, 32 Newton. And this one, the angle is 60 degrees. So that means... Uh, uh, the component forces are here and here. Okay, uh, logic. Okay, logic. Uh, logic right. Okay, this the force is downward in this direction, so the x component is here. Y component is here. Okay, like this. Right now. So, we can take it that uh, there is a pretend uh, that there is a parallelogram here. So, we can get a triangle. Okay, we can get triangle. So, we pretend. Uh. So, um, you can draw diagram uh, to help you see the, solve the problem. Uh. You can see the situation more clearly. Okay, so here is 60 degree. So this is Fx. This one here is Fy. Okay, so this one is also Fy. This one is Fx. Okay, eh? alright. So, can find the X component and the Y component. Okay, of the pushing force. Alright, so to find the x component, uh, x is adjacent to the 60 degree. Okay, adjacent to the 60 degree. So, we use cos. Uh, remember, uh, the reason why we use cos for fx, uh, to find fx, uh, is because fx is adjacent. Sometimes the fx can be opposite. Uh, be, uh, for example, if the angle Sometimes the question can give the angle at different places. So if the angle is over here, then that means the fx become opposite. Then that means if you want to find fx, you need to use sine. Okay? Please do not memorize blindly. Eh? Some students they memorize blindly. Oh, want to find x component, use cos. Want to find y component, use sine. Not necessary like that, sir. Uh, not necessarily like that. Understand? It depends on uh, where is the location of the angle. Understand? Uh? Okay? 
so if the fx is adjacent to the angle then you use cos ah, to find the fx if the uh, fx is uh, opposite the angle then you have to use sine ah, to find fx okay all right so okay so um Okay, so this one is adjacent, so we use cos. Ah. Okay, cos theta equals to fx over f. So cos 60 degree equals fx over f. F is, uh, it gives here that the pushing force f is 32 newton. So fx equal to Okay, equal to 16 Newton eh? okay equal to 16 Newton and the uh, Fy we can use sine okay Fy over F okay so sine 60 degree Fy over 32 so Fy equals to 27.7 uh, Newton okay uh, all right so uh, resolve the following forces into horizontal component and vertical component all right so we pretend that there is a parallelogram okay uh, sorry first uh, we start from this one okay we see this 70 Newton force at the angle of 42 degrees so we pretend that okay there is a force here and there is a force here so these two force produce this uh, resultant force so this is the fx this is the fy line. okay the x component um, is the horizontal line, and the y component is the vertical okay vertical component horizontal and vertical line. okay so we pretend that there is a parallelogram so from here we can get a triangle okay like this so 42 degree this one is 70 newton okay this is fx this is fy okay so so fx is adjacent so we can use cos cos 42 degree equals to fx over f70 so fx will be equal to 52.02 okay next for the y okay we use sine sine 42 degree equals to fy over 70 so Fy equals to 46.84 Newton. Alright. Okay, so next this one. Uh, 90 Newton uh, 64 degree from horizontal. So we pretend that there is two force. Ah. Okay, these two force, one force horizontal, one force that is vertical that produce this 90 Newton force. Okay. So this is the x component, this is the y component. Okay, so we pretend that there is a parallelogram fy. So we can get a triangle like this. 90 Newton, 64 degree fx fy. Okay? So fx is adjacent to the angle so we use cos ah. so cos 64 degree equals to fx over 90 90 newton so fx is equal to 39.45 newton and for the y component sine 64 degree fy over 90 
So we get 80.89 Newton. All right, very simple. Okay, continue with next example. Okay, next example. This is example. Okay, example number three. Uh, example number three. Okay. Okay, example number three. Determine the magnitude of the component forces of the weight of the boy in the direction parallel to the inclined plane and in the direction perpendicular to the inclined plane so basically is like this okay this is the inclined plane eh? this is the inclined plane okay this is the inclined plane they want you to determine the magnitude of component forces of the weight in the direction parallel to the inclined plane okay that means like this parallel to the inclined plane that means like this parallel okay parallel to the inclined plane this is inclined plane and this is parallel and in the direction perpendicular to the inclined plane perpendicular is 90 degree so that means like this huh? 90 degree to the inclined plane okay so this is perpendicular this is component uh, parallel parallel to Inclined plane. This one is perpendicular to inclined plane. Okay. All right. So these two components, they are component forces of the weight. Why we say that it is component forces of the weight okay so you see eh? okay you see this weight is downward okay weight is a force that is downward okay weight is a force that is downward okay weight is a force that is downward so this weight act on this boy okay so this boy is pressing on this inclined plane right uh, the body is pressed on the inclined plane so the direction of the boy pressing on the inclined plane okay we say that it is uh, normal okay we say that it is uh, in the direction that is directly downward towards the inclined plane basically the uh the boy is pressing down with the direction that is perpendicular to the inclined plane that means press in this direction okay press in this direction and uh, this boy can slide down so the reason why the boy can slide down is because there is a force that make the boy slide down in this direction in the direction that is parallel to the inclined plane okay i repeat eh? this boy press on the inclined plane in the direction that is perpendicular to the inclined plane and also the boy can slide down why they can slide down in this direction the boy can slide down in the direction parallel to the inclined plane because there is also a force that make the boy slide down in this direction so you see the reason why the boy can press on the inclined plane and also slide down is because of which force because of weight 
okay this weight pull the boy directly down but because of this weight the boy press on the incline plane and the boy can slide down along the incline plane okay the boy can slide down parallel to the incline plane both of these things happen because of weight okay if don't have weight that means the boy will not press on the incline plane the boy will not slide down so that means these two force eh? one force is where the boy press on the incline plane another force make the boy slide down along the incline plane so these two forces they exist because of weight got weight then only got these two forces no weight then don't have these two forces okay so these two forces are component of weight okay these two component forces are component forces of weight all right so so we want to calculate the component forces all right so uh, let me draw eh? okay so this is weight okay okay this is weight eh? so this is the force that is this is the component force eh? okay uh, component forces okay and because this component force is perpendicular with the incline plane the incline plane we take it as horizontal and because this is perpendicular with incline plane so we take this as the y component okay because we take the incline plane the surface of the incline plane as like the ground okay flat ground okay so this one is the force the component that is uh, parallel to the incline plane so we take this as the x component or the horizontal component okay all right so now one thing that is missing is this angle you see this 50 degree okay you look at this 50 degree eh? where is this 50 degree inside between these three forces okay so this 50 degree we can find out where is this 50 degree just like this okay let's say i draw a line here so this is 50 degree okay so if this is 50 this is 90 then how much is this this is uh 40 right now. okay 90 50 40 total 180 so that means if this is 40 here is 90 because this is directly down straight down this is 90 so that means here is 50 lah. okay here is 50 degree get the idea so this 50 is equal to the angle 50 here this 50 same with this angle okay this angle here and this angle here is the same all right uh, okay so now we have this uh, 50 degree here we know the angle is here okay i draw one more one more time huh? Okay, this is the horizontal component. This is the uh, per vertical component. Okay, and here this is a fifty degree, the angle here. 
so these two is the component of the weight so we pretend that there is parallelogram here lah. you see lah. so this is fy this is fx okay so this is the force this is the two component okay like this get the idea so from here we can get a triangle lah. this is 90 degree so we can get a triangle so this fy this is opposite 50 f uh, sorry fx is opposite 50 fy is adjacent to 50 so if we want to calculate the fy we have to use cos we want to calculate fx we have to use sine okay so let's look at this it says that the weight of the boy is 300 newton eh? okay the weight is 300 newton so we can calculate the uh, fx using sine sine theta equals to the f x over f so sine 50 degree equals to f x over f which is the weight okay this is the f uh, the weight so 300 so f x equals to so we get 229.8 newton and then for the y component we use cos equals to f y over f so cos 50 f y this is 300 so f y equals to okay 192.8 Okay, Newton. Okay, one nine two point eight Newton. All right. So uh, now we can. So now we find. We found. Uh, we have successfully found the uh, the component that is parallel to the inclined plane, and also the component that is perpendicular to the inclined plane. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, I want you to try this uh, example. Uh, so that I just made up okay, just for you to try uh, this situation where you have a uh, weight. Huh? Okay, so uh, you have a uh, 100 Newton object, okay, place, uh, placed on an inclined plane that is 30 degree from horizontal. So find the component forces of the weight that is uh, parallel to inclined plane and perpendicular to inclined plane. Okay, so um, okay, try this. Huh? Okay, so let's discuss this one. Okay, find the component forces of the weight. So you see this object press on uh, because of the weight, because of this force, this object press on this surface. And because of this object, and because of this weight, this force, eh, the object can slide down. Okay, the object can slide down. So if the object can slide down in this direction, so that means there must be a force uh, in this direction. And if this object is pressing on this surface in this direction, that means you must have another force in this direction that is uh, normal to the surface. Okay, so uh, so the re so these two force only exists because of this 100 newton lah. if you don't have this 100 newton these two fy fx fy will not exist so uh, that means this fx and fy they are component of the 100 newton okay uh, the effect of the fx fy is the same as 100 okay 100 have the same effect as fx fy all right so now where is this 30 degree so same like what we uh, discussed just now if this is 30 okay uh, so that means because this is um, 90 yeah? okay this is 90 so uh, that means this is 60 lah. 
if this is 60, that means this one is, uh, because this one is 90, yeah, so that means this one is 30. So this one 30, this one 30. Alright. So now uh, we pretend that there is a, okay, there is a parallelogram. Okay, we have parallelogram. So these two force, okay, this one the resultant force, ah, okay, like that example, ah, like similar to example force, okay, uh, similar to the resultant force, ah, okay, similar to the resultant force. Okay, so this Fy is adjacent to the 30 degree. Okay, Fy is adjacent to 30 degree. So we use cos. Ah. Cos 30 degree equals to Fy over F. F is 100. Ah. Okay, so Fy equals to uh, Okay, eight six point six newton. Okay, this one fx sine because is uh because this one also fx huh? f uh, this one this one fx this one also fx. So this fx this force uh component x huh? or the horizontal component or the component that is parallel with the inclined plane is opposite the 30 degree okay opposite the 30 degree so sine 30 fx over 100 so fx equals uh, 50 newton okay okay eh? so this is uh, 50. This is 86.6. Okay. Uh, this is A. This is B. Lah. 